Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about N64 emulation with Gopher 64. And Gopher 64 just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, version 0.1.2 is the latest update. And this one is simple and straightforward. They've added in support for resizable windows as well as some bug fixes. Gopher 64 is still pretty early on in development. It's written in Rust, and fun fact here, it's being developed by the same person behind Simple 64. Gopher 64 is 100% free, it's open source, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Next up here, we're talking about Undertale for the Nintendo Switch, and Undertale has been remastered. Not officially, but unofficially, and it looks pretty good. So Undertale Remastered for the Switch is based on Undertale Remastered Mod version 0.81 for PC. I would argue gives the game a completely different look and feel. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to the YouTube trailer in the description below and feel free to check it out. It does work with Nintendo Switch emulators, both on PC and on Android. So version 1.0.0 of this mod has just dropped. It's 100% free, it's open source, it's available on GitHub, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. It does require a copy of Undertale for the Switch. Next up here, we're quickly talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation on Android with Citra. And if you've got a Snapdragon 800 series CPU, specifically an 870, you might get some performance improvements by using the Turnip R11 driver. This person was playing Super Mario 3D World and they went from 43 frames per second to 55. Now at this point in time, if you're looking to emulate more powerful systems like the Switch, the 3DS, Windows, and in some cases PS2, Snapdragon is the way to go. With Snapdragon CPUs, you can use custom GPU drivers and I'll drop a link to it in the description below here. These are free, they're open source, and the latest one at the time of filming is Mesa Turnip Driver Revision 11. And interestingly enough here, someone was able to get Need for Speed Hot Pursuit up and running on Yuzu on Android at a stable 30 frames per second using a Snapdragon 860 and those Mesa Turnip R11 drivers. But moving on, and next up we're talking about a game that doesn't require a Snapdragon CPU in order to run correctly, and that's because it's on the SNES. We're talking about F-Zero Maximum Velocity, and this is a ROM hack that brings the GBA tracks to F-Zero. It's worth pointing out that this ROM hack is in a beta state, there's still work left to do on it. It's shaping up nicely though, and I'll drop a link to Pixel Cherry Ninja's YouTube video in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. Next up, we're talking about DG Voodoo 2, and at a high level here, this is a graphics wrapper that converts old graphics APIs to Direct 3D 11 or 12. It is for Windows 7 or greater, and it just got a brand new release. I know version 2.7 is a very popular version, but at the time of filming, version 2.82 is the latest update. This update is huge. It contains a number of bug fixes and a massive overall here of the general pipeline code and the capabilities of the FF pipeline. Honestly here, if you play old PC games, DG Voodoo 2 is something worth checking out. And if you've got DG Voodoo 2, it may be worth updating to version 2.82. And last up here, we're talking about a retro gaming handheld that Kezen sums up perfectly as interesting. It's the ZPG A1 Unicorn, where ZPG stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or Z Pocket Game. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole bunch of information about this device. According to this screenshot in Google Translate, we've got a 4 inch 720 by 720 square screen, special mechanical micro movement for the handle, hall rocker, suspended fighting cross key a 4,500 milliamp hour large battery, and play multi-platform games. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. I am very skeptical about this device. It does have an interesting design, but that D-pad is a little bit concerning. By the looks of it, it does not look like it's gonna be very good. I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong. On the back of this thing, I'm not quite sure if this is a fan or just a vent. It does look like this is ridged, so it's easier to grip, and. At the same time here, the 720 by 720 screen is interesting. To be honest with you, it kind of reminds me of the Pow Kitty RGB 30, although the ZPG A1 Unicorn, I would argue, has a better form factor. 
Overall, I'm hoping this thing turns out well and it's not e-waste. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a few things today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of them in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.